Welcome back, everybody. Youngsters on the OG format. No more, um, whatever, you know, us playing a game or something in the background. We're switching it back a little bit. Uh, big Steelers W today against the Bengals. Should have had another touchdown, but we know how that goes sometimes. Can't control all aspects of the game. But a promising look for the Steelers after, you know, Matt Canada finally gone. I think we need to sit down and, you know, talk about that a little bit. So whenever I had the chance to talk about that. Um, first time the offense had, what, over 400 yards in 50 games? 50 so that's probably going on. That's going on, what, at least three years, right? Three seasons, 17 games, 17-34, you know, three-ish seasons. Second longest streak of all time. But, you know, as soon as Matt Canada hits the road, looks like, you know, the offense is back. Kenny Pickett was airing it out a little bit, which, you know, that's good to see because if he's going to make mistakes, let him at this point, honestly. Last week I was thinking, you know, the experiment's over kind of deal. But, you know, he – he, this was a answer back game, and uh, they wrote him off, and he didn't write back. So, thoughts? thoughts um, you? Uh, I'm just gonna rip right into the. It's you know I'm starting the lawn mower right now. First of all, we're back on camera. It's great to be in the you know the old format. I believe one of us even maybe may said we weren't doing this until Matt Canada was fired, which he was this week. So, you know we are back. You never see someone. You never you're never happy to see someone lose their job. But when you're unqualified and a dunce, I don't feel bad. So that is what it is. First play of the game, Kenny found the middle of the field. Um, Pat Fryermuth must have reintroduced himself to Kenny Pickett over 100 yards today. <laughs> On the offense, it did look way better. The Bengals are a decent defensive team, so you you know you put some stock into it. But yeah, I'm gonna get right into it. Deontay Johnson comes out yesterday. He him and Minka got into it after the game last week. Hayward and Watt, you know, separated them, had to have the talk, you know, you don't lose the team. And then Deontay today, it probably should have been a touchdown if Tomlin would challenged it. But regardless, he dropped the ball, no touchdown. Next play, there's a fumble. He's just standing there. Did zero – if there is – if you give less than zero effort, that's what Deontay Johnson did. And I'm just sick of the bitching by the wide receivers. You get your chance, you drop the ball, you don't put any effort in. Just shut up. You don't make, you know, it's it's just a constant pattern with these guys, whether it's George Pickens complaining, Deontay Johnson complaining. I'm sick of it. Chase Claypool before that, Antonio Brown before that. It is a cycle, and I am so fed up with it. Juju, or did Juju not complain? Juju was in, he complained a little bit. Yeah, no, they, they I feel like he wasn't as bad, though. Juju wasn't as bad, no. No, but you know what I'm saying. It's always yeah. just, it's a pattern. And Deontay, the effort on that play was horrendous. And I wouldn't, if I'm Tomlin, I'm sitting him the rest of the game. That's just ridiculous. Ain't going to happen. He's a Tomlin guy. You see them joking and carrying on even after halftime on the sidelines. Um, so he's got this long leash. He always has, always will. Uh, doesn't have to put in full effort. Um, can give up on the team basically on that play. Cause he could, he could have, yeah. he could have recovered that fumble or tackled the guy right there. Uh, just didn't even run a route, and that's what you got to do whenever you're trying to get the run game going. Because then they'll know they'll key off on, hey, he's not running his routes; it's a run. Uh, you you learn that back in Pee Wee. Um, piss poor effort, piss poor attitude. It's always comes out of that wide receiver room too. They're very big on the drama queen esque. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, th that's their character, that's their makeup, and I don't like it. You're going to no. have that. You, you know, you're going to have guys get pissed off or upset that they're not getting the ball. Well, if he was pissed off that his buddy Mike Tomlin didn't challenge that, that play, uh, go to the ground and, and keep a hold of that ball. So there's, yeah, not, there, there's not a challenge. I, I think it was a touchdown. I thought it. And then even Gene Sterator said, you got three feet down. And I get that. You have to complete it to the ground sometimes. It's a gray area because if you think at the front side of the end zone and a running back's diving in, he breaks that plane and then loses it, that's still yeah. a touchdown. Well, that was still technically a touchdown. He should have challenged it. I think it starts with Mike Tomlin because he doesn't know when to challenge, what to challenge, and how to challenge because he'll challenge the stupidest shit and lose a timeout, or he won't challenge 
clear cut touchdowns, first yeah. downs, uh, change of possessions. It's it starts with him or whoever he has going over the tape trying to tell him when to to throw that red flag. Um, but all in all, I guess the game was okay. You still only I put mean, up sixteen was, points. You still only who who are you going to beat? You exactly. Know? How do you amass more yardage than you ever have in the past five years, but only score what? Well, because 16. you don't. Yeah, you don't. You know, you don't capitalize on your opportunities. Nope. You know, Deontay drops that. Next thing you know, there's a fumble. Deontay's not on his horse. You know, he's not getting back. Yeah. I mean, you want to see people? You, know, you see T.J. Watt. He's on the horse every time. You know, horse. What I'm saying, horse, yeah. right? You yeah. Be on yeah, that, right? Yeah. Horse. Yeah. You know, but, I hear you there. But that's the thing. They're trading three or yeah, seven for three a lot, and they always have. And you can't win these close games all the time. Look at the Cleveland game last week. I know we didn't touch on it last week. It was abysmal. But you're not going to win these one-score games all the time. Look at look at Minnesota this year. They won all the one-score games last year. It, you know, it's a flip of the coin whenever you have one possession, you know, game. Um, it's kind of weird because normally we're on the other side of it with uh, Tody Yards. But to yeah. finally outgain a team and win, um, ask all the other teams that outgained us this year and we have beaten uh, the other what, six teams. Um, it, it's just, it's weird. The NFL is weird. It's strange. It, it, it really is. But uh, a lot of and balance in the game that. today, too. Um, Najee was running hard. Um, I understand Warren put it on the ground, but it kind of shot away from him. Uh, he didn't get as many touches I, th- he I thought good he today, would. I don't think. He looked okay, but he wasn't his usual good self well, for you whatever believe, reason. You put the ball on the ground, you know, it, it messes with your confidence, and then you're not going to get the calls in, in crunch time or, like, uh, big third downs. Um, that That's going to weigh on your confidence as well. So you can't put the ball on the turf, but I'm, it happens. It does. That's what's- well, that's what's going to happen when you have a 1A, 1B running back. You know, hey, you put it on the ground, yeah. next man up kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. And, and there's no drop off there. how beefy Najee was. He's like 240. Yes. Oh, he's, and yeah. he's he like was in open space today, and he looked like low. Yeah. He looks slow. <laughs> he, he is not fast. He came into camp this year heavier than Jerome Bennis did back in the day. Yo, well, I, there's, there's little, a difference yeah. between I know, heavy and I know, you know, I know. The ways you are heavy and where you are heavy. I get it, um, but still, think yeah. of it that way. He he weighs more than Jerome did when when he was with the Steelers. So I know Najee's yeah. probably got six inches on Jerome. Jerome wasn't very tall, but regardless, two forty is two forty. That's you know? that's the same thing. You're still hauling two forty yeah. no matter where it is. Yeah, yeah. You break it. You break it down though. You know, Jerome. You, you know. Put it in horse terms, he was like a Clydesdale. You know? Yeah, big goofy clomping around. Uh, he's more. Nauseous. Nauseous. Uh, no, I think I think you say Najee's more the Clydesdale because he's taller, and uh, Jerome's like that, uh, kind of like a donkey, you know, just built. Yeah, he ain't in that horse no. category. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it takes a special person to be like yeah. in the Venn diagram of like horse. Yeah, you know, yes, yeah, it does fucking. Hell. <laughs> so I thought the defense held up today. <laughs> TJ Watt almost ripped off that dude's head. I don't even know his name. He sucks that uh, quarterback. Brownie. Brownie, Brownie. Yeah. yeah. His best completions to Jamar Chase were two tip balls in the air. Yeah. So which I wanted I, mean, I wanted to touch on. I'm glad you brought up. And a lot of people didn't know this and I was talking in a, a group chat. As I said, as soon as that ball is tipped, take his head off. You can tackle him. It's fair game. That ball is tipped at the line. There's no pass interference. There's no nothing. There, he doesn't have a right to that ball. You don't have a right to that ball. Take his head off. Don't let him catch it. Tackle him right there. Because that, that, that's, that's the way it is. That ball was tipped. It's, it's fair game for anybody. You can run anybody over. You take his head off. And a lot yeah. of people are like, you the can't do that. Like yes, you can. It's at the line of scrimmage. Yes. And you're just away from the play. He just land yeah. out or is that yeah. to be near the ball? No, no. You can, anybody's yeah. fair game at that point. Once that ball is tipped and it is in the air, anybody can take anybody out. Yes. There's yeah. no so interference. Like yeah. Ball's tipped, international waters. Yes. Yeah. It's okay. fair game. Fair game. I never knew that. It's yes. a good idea, though. Yeah, that's that's yeah. the thing. I mean, if Patrick Peterson would have taken Jamar Chase out right there, hit him hit him in the knees or whatever, 
he doesn't catch that ball. All right, maybe yeah. not the knees, but you know, you wrap them up. You just bear hug them. There's no interference. They can't flag you for that. Dan's coming from Why the shot. That? coaching putting some you know bounty gate coming from no no, no 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 chemo van olhoffen oh. Why is that? you know like the reason behind that rule it was it's just a tip ball so it's not intended for a player so it's not like anybody has like when a ball's in the, the air and, yeah you don't have a right to that ball um kind of like in hockey where you have a right to your ice and stuff and you get interfered it's the same concept when the ball's in the air um, that's not tipped in the NFL, you have a right mm-hmm. to, to make a play on that ball without being impeded. But once it's tipped, there you know that goes out the window because now you can be impeded. It, anybody can go after that ball. Yeah, it'd probably take a special horse to get over it there. Like, you got to be would. on your horse. Yeah. Like, especially. Yeah. Um, that ball's in the air. They had a chance. Uh, who? Who was it that Tipped the second one, and uh, K- it was, was like right in their up? hands. I think KZ came it's up. Easy. I think so. That's why he plays defense. He can't catch. Yeah, but still, I feel like he should at least not tip that in the air like thirty feet. He should have caught it. He that was a pick also, six. Kind of a bogus touchdown. The Bengals had to. It wasn't really. They could have easily shut them out. I believe. And they're coming to Pittsburgh. I, th- I thought they already played the Bengals for no. some reason. Nope. Nope. That's the first um, time. Joe Burrow's out for the year. Yep. So I feel like that's going to be a pretty cut and dry game. Because hopefully Minka will be back by then. He should There's be. No, when it comes to the Steelers, there is no such thing well, as how a how they look today, um, I don't know if it's just like, you know, we're playing for the new guy kind of thing. You know, when like a coach gets fired. Like, hey, we're going to play for the guy now. He is already there. Yes. Just you know, but there, there's an extra edge. Like, hey, we need to step our shit up. There was rumors. Did you see Jalen Warren said after the game? Like, no. You know, he was pretty blunt. He said there was more communication on offense because uh, apparently none of the assistants yeah, were they weren't, pretty Yeah, to they weren't in on anything. Yeah, the game planning and stuff, yeah. Jalen Warren said they were more communicative. They were taking more risks, you know, thrown to the middle of the field. That's... That's just scheming and communication, yeah. which at any level is important when you're, you know, coaching, let alone the players. So and that's, you know, maybe Matt Canada should have been the one knocked out outside Tequila Cowboy. Yeah. Todd Haley. I feel like that's back. 101, like, and especially at that level, the highest level, don't you think, like, the minds of the football coaches are a lot better? So why, like, what are they getting paid for? Then? Like, it's, why are they there if they're not in on the game plan? Are they just... A, Right. right. Um, what was going on there? Well, I mean, you know, you have your position coaches, like the running back, like Faulkner was a running backs coach, Frisman Jackson, wide receivers coach. Obviously, you're, you know, you're coaching your groups that time. But in terms of the overall game plan, it was just Matt Canada. That it was just given to them. And they're kind of like, all right, this is it. Like, cut in stone. We can't change it. So kind of like Matt Canada was. Like, was it was like Ron Hextall. Yeah. You know, he didn't even have a plan. Yeah. He's interviewing for his job and he's out there on Microsoft Word trying to put together a five year plan. He don't got no plan. But yeah. So with, with Canada, it just, it almost felt like he wanted to be the smartest guy in the room, kind of like we talk about Mike Tomlin. Um, um, but it, I'd say a different angle. He kind of wanted to be, you know, like we said, there's these different coaches for different areas, like running backs. Like, it's kind of like he wanted to be like a Mr. You know, positions maybe where he just wanted his hand in every cookie jar and like, you know, something like that. But you, you look back when uh, Mike Munchak was the offensive line coach, he was in on a lot of the play calls too mm-hmm. um, and would t- talk to Todd Haley or um, Randy Feekner and them guys. Hey, we can run this. So I'm confident with our line blocking this against this look, yo, this and that. Matt Canada didn't want any of that. He didn't want no feedback, no no push and shove, no give and take. There was no checks and balances. It was like he was rolling with an iron fist, and it it just shows that he was underqualified and way in over his head. Um, and rumor has it when they moved him down to the sidelines, they were actually having Sullivan call the plays. Um, or with, with Faulkner, is that the running back coach? One of them yeah. two were part. Were, possibly now this is the rumor actually calling the plays from the box um which 
doesn't make sense because it still looked like but it would be the canada hey we're going to be conservative you can call these plays but now that he's out you know it opens the playbook because they're not going to change the playbook you're still going to get matt canada's plays but you're going to get yeah somebody who's going to call them in the right sequence and and you know take a little more risk yeah i i, I agree but it was encouraging to see the offense you know at least put up the rgs in the middle of the field um you know kenny missed a couple throws he had, I think he had Deontay on the one, but he was already getting flushed out of the pocket. So you can't he still really struggles tell. with pocket presence. I feel like it's just like whenever it's starting to break down, he doesn't get it. And like, he can't feel that defense behind him, which, you know, you can't see him kind which, of thing. Which is crazy. But, Cause then if you, if you watched the same station was at CBS and the Texans yeah. game came on the end of the Texans game and you look at the composure of CJ Stroud, late in the mm -hmm. game with the ball in his hands to go down and try and win it. And he was just calm, cool, you know, felt the pocket collapse. He stepped up in it and then he would break out. He wasn't just scrambling, spinning, trying to get away, step up in the pocket. There's, there's some things I think Kenny needs to work on. I'm not saying that he's the answer, but the answer. It was, but it was, <laughs> it was, uh, it looked better. He looked more confident, looked a little more composed. I mean, the bar was pretty low. Yeah. Hey, that was the best he's looked all year, though. Probably, Would you agree? Was that his probably. best game of the year? Yeah, because... Uh, yeah, but the bar was not that high. I mean, no. It still wasn't great. Still, I'd say there. it's a pretty significant stat. I didn't look yet, but I remember, like, seeing something real quick. I don't know the exact numbers, but I'd say it's, like, a pretty... Like, if you can get that out of him every game, like, you're you're pretty happy with that. Because you got to think, too, Deontay's touchdown pass didn't count, you know. But... I mean, Hey, no turnovers, right? That's the thing. 278. Yeah. No touchdowns, no interceptions. Yeah, which is big. I mean, the no PR touchdowns sucks. 6. That's not that great, right? What'd you say? QBR 65.6. Yeah, not that's that not great. great. But you got to think, he yeah. didn't have a touchdown. He didn't throw an interception. You really can't. The running game looked good. So. Yeah. He's only thrown six touchdowns all year. Yeah, that's not good, but. That's, hey, that's pretty stinky butt right there. Maybe like, I'm sorry. maybe with them opening it up now, maybe we'll have a few more. Yeah. You could hope. And then, so, and then, and then here's no. the crazy thing. In November, Kenny Pickett has completed 48 passes, 24 of which were today. So 50% of his passes of this month were completed today. Wow. And this is the last week of the month, you know. And Last, yeah. last Sunday. In, in November, he's thrown for 392 yards, 278, which were today. That's ridiculous. Because <laughs> then you got to think he had the Browns, Packers, who was the Titans. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I know you Dude. you won two of those three, but still, like, you're getting held to minimal gain. So, if that's anything, any foreshadowing, it's not a bad foreshadow. Do you, do you know what would be hilarious? Like, you know, as in hit firing Frank Signetti yeah. Jr. today? Yeah. Matt Campbell gets hired back by uh, Narduzzi. I saw some memes, uh, yeah. He's still, so he's, he's still down there. Is there at least one Thanos meme where it's like, where did your failure bring like you back to me or something? But, I mean, I just want to see them put up more points. Like in that yeah. Packers game. The Steelers? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. it's not going to be like the sexy Steelers anymore where they're no. putting up 30 a game. They just don't have – they have the skill position, guys, I think, where they could. But the two positions it really counts at, they don't have a quarterback they're very much lacking. And then, you know, like a decent line, which we thought yeah. would be decent. It's just like poopy diaper. Yeah. It's not a good line. It's just – Poopy diaper. Yeah. You have basically two and a half good linemen. I mean, yeah. I'll say James Daniels and Broderick Jones are your two best linemen. Yeah. Um, Sumalo had some bad games to start this year, but yeah, you know, he's been all right. Dan Moore Jr.'s a turnstile. He's ass. Uh, deep fried. <laughs> deep. And he's Mason, not even poopy diaper. He's just deep fried. Yeah. 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 He's yeah, just Mason bad. Cole, right. center. That's tough. I, I'd, I'd almost. Uh, I know I don't want to look this far ahead, but in the draft, take like the number one center if he's there. Yeah. Uh, honestly, 
So what do you do about quarterbacks still? Though? Mm, do you that's tough. ride in another year? That's you know? tough, yeah. Dude, I mean, I'm, Say, I'm, uh, who would be available? The guy from Washington, maybe? or Would he be gone? I mean, yeah. I don't know if he'd be gone, but you I'm just think who realistically would be there. That's not high of a draft pick, especially with, you know, yeah. you... You see, you know, you you run out this year, see how Kenny finishes the year, and you can't invest two, you know, first round picks and quarterbacks that close together. Yeah, because that just leaves so many other holes on the team. Where, yeah, so like the Cardinals, right? Or who's the one that drafted Josh Rosen? Then like Kyler Murray, like yeah, two years that, later. That was the Cardinals. I mean, that didn't really help them out either. Well, look at San Francisco. Stupid. With Trey Lance, and then they traded him away, and they they lost all them Let's first. In yeah. Dallas, yeah, he went to Dallas, yeah. but they traded all those first round picks to move up to get him and, and look mm-hmm. at their situation. They're going to be hurting here in a couple of years. Um, Brock Purdy, they're gonna, all in though, they're it, yeah. be like number one contenders, I'd yeah. Say. But Brock yeah, Purdy, they, they lucked out with Purdy, yeah. But he's kind of oh, yeah. he's kind of yeah, turning yeah. you know, you're seeing that pumpkin show back up. I know they won today, but it he didn't have the greatest of performances. I think he turned I mean, him twice. We have a good backup, Sam Darnold, right? Yeah, he's all right. Serviceable. He's, he's, he, he's he looks like a Lego man head. I think we've said that before. Yeah. But, I mean, it's easy for Brock Purdy to be a game manager, arguably the number one yeah. running back in the NFL. Well, not only that, but look at who your head coach. If they had, like, a decent quarterback, that would be, like, super scary. Because yeah. they have literally Mr. Irrelevant throwing to Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, and then – you know CMC, that and they're defense, still putting that up. Defense is really good too. It, yeah, yeah, it really well, is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean you got Bosa, and then their middle linebacker is phenomenal. I can't even remember his name, but Fred Warner. Yeah, yeah. Warner. But you know, it's it's Chase Young. It, it's yeah. They just picked up Chase Young in, before the trade deadline. But when you got Kyle There's Shanahan, you don't hear about him much. That's crazy. When you got Kyle He's Shanahan, like a big name on the Commanders. Nuts. Well, he was the only guy on the Commanders. Yeah, and, and do you, I watched that Niners game. You don't hear anything. Like, they even say his name anymore. Nah. There's just so many guys on that defense. Yeah. Who else they trade for? They get someone else, too? They were trying to get a cornerback, I think. I don't know if they did. It wasn't the guy from the Bears, right? The one that the Steelers were also linked to? Yeah, he didn't get moved. Yeah, he, he stayed. Because no. no. uh, the Eagles were looking at him, too. Which they're down yeah. right now, seventeen seven. I think half. I think it's third quarter just started. Are they playing Buffalo. Yeah, Josh Allen looks yeah. good, but um, I'm gonna wow. foreshadow here for the Steelers. Their next one, two, three, four, five, six. Just six, six games left. They got to play the Cardinals at home, which is next week. Then they play the Pats at home. That's her horrid Mag Jones right. benched again. Right. They play some butt teams coming the, up. The, like, this I mean, this is what I'm getting at. You got Kyler Murray. You don't know if he's going to be playing MW3 you know, the night before or is he going to yeah. show up in Pittsburgh ready to go. Cause he's is just it Marquise gonna... Brown hurt too still or is he? I'm not uh, sure. Hollywood. But then then you got Mac Jones, but you might get, uh, what's their backup? Uh, Haley Zappi. Zappi, that's it. And then Haley, Dylan Zappi, yeah. Then you go to Indianapolis and you got to play Garner Minshew. Hell of a mustache. Oh, yeah. Hell of scares me. Man, yeah, like, the the are, like sneaky good though. You know, but, they're like but sneaky. This is what this is what I'm getting at. Then you got to play the Bengals again. You know, you're not going to play Joe Burrow. He's out in for the Pittsburgh, season. Though. In, in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh this time around. That's Christmas Eve, twenty third, or the day before Christmas Eve. Yep. Um, no, that's Christmas Eve. Twenty third. Yeah. No, that's, the that's day Eve. Eve, Eve, okay. So that'll be a Saturday game. Um, Weird. And then, I like it though. Then you got the Seahawks, which, which is it's you got to go over West Coast, yeah. Uh, and then you have got the Ravens to finish the year. I'd say Lamar loss, be healthy. loss. But, he, but here's the thing: you got four games with either backup quarterbacks or quarterbacks that are struggling, or a quarterback that just came back. Um, did Kyler Murray play this week? Yeah, he played last yeah. week. Too. Okay, okay. So he he'll have he has two games under his belt for this season, and he's coming in to Acrisure Stadium. And like I said, Mac Jones, hot ass, deep fried ass. Yeah, Bailey Zappi, I think he threw two picks today, mm-hmm. a pick or two. 
Yeah, right. I mean, that Patriots quarterback's room, basically the equivalent of eating Taco Bell and Indian food and just sitting on the toilet. I mean, talk hours. about the absolute yeah. fall of a franchise. You yeah. know, like, we talk about the Steelers having, like, a down year and, like, the Steelers' way being 500. I mean, the Patriots are just, gar like, hot vomit garbage. Like, you know, when you're at the beach and you walk by a dumpster, it, it just smells like, you know, vomit, like, poop. Yeah. But the Patriots are I mean, Jersey Shore right now. Well, that's just, just that's the thing though, and that's why everybody gives Tomlin a bunch of credit and Art Rooney as well because we bought them out without ever having a losing season, which I can give them respect for. But sometimes you need to, like, like the Pats right now, they're going through it, and <laughs> and we yeah, they're two and eight, and we, and we say it all the time. It's gonna happen to the Pens. You know now. what I mean? I have no they idea. They're 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 eight. trash, but. So, go ahead, sorry. But what I'm getting at is very favorable schedule here coming up for the Steelers, and they yeah. kind of hold their own right. destiny, and uh, I don't know who the Ravens play in that stretch. Let me look here real quick. The Ravens, have, schedule, the Ravens right? have to play the Chargers tonight, yeah. tonight, the Rams, Jags, Niners, Dolphins, and then us. So, so they're gonna be battered and bruised. Right. And not only not only that, field. but if they lose a couple of those. Let's say they lose to the Jags, the Niners, the Dolphins, or you know, one, two of the three. That opens the door for the Steelers to take the North and in not getting into the playoffs as a wild card, but as a divisional winner. That's big. Yeah. So I'm saying if you can beat the teams, you should say win next week against Cardinals, beat the Patriots like you should. Um, beat the Colts, which, you know, that could be one of those trap iffy games, and then beat the Bengals like you should at home. You can be sitting at what, eleven and what are they, five right now? Four, no, they're seven and four, four so four. eleven and four. Yeah. You're sitting at eleven four with two weeks left in the season, you go eleven and six. Like even if you're what, at ten wins. Let's go, let's you say, know, let's say twelve and five, but they beat the Ravens there. At the end of the year, they'll win the division. It, it's in Baltimore, though, right? Yeah, but still, that's tough. But you know, they're gonna be battered and bruised. They're playing some good teams. Yeah. And the Steelers, hey, they're playing down a little bit, but that might not be bad for you know the young yeah. quarterback situation we have. You know, we find our stride late in the season, like the Steelers always do in the past couple of years. You get hot at the right we time. Could be sitting at, we could, you know, yeah, winning out isn't a crazy. It's not impossible. Thought. No, it's yeah. gonna be. It's gonna be difficult, but possible it is a crazy thought but you know the ravens like you said they're gonna be battered and bruised i mean odell might be a family man by then you know based off what <laughs> pz jr said so you don't know how they're gonna look i mean the ravens are always just dinged up by the end of the year but it really doesn't matter with them because they always find a way i'll say you know, this but... about the ravens also the the steelers scheme against them very very well even in the games yeah. that they beat us, it's not by much. It's by a walk-off field goal, um, you know. So it's not like they don't scheme against Lamar Jackson very well. They scheme against him very, very well. And to that point, look at Lamar Jackson's QBR and and um, record against AFC North teams. It's abysmal compared to everybody else in the league because they only see him once every, uh, you know, once every few years. So the 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 North knows how to scheme against him. That's why he he doesn't look like a world beater, and he doesn't you know he's not an MVP candidate because the North you know keeps him in check. Yeah, that's because maybe they look into it more. Cause, you know, we absolutely, do yeah, because you're gonna see him you know? twice in a divisional game. You know, yeah. you're gonna get up for that and all that. But some other places, you know, they might write him off. He writes Unless, back. Yeah, he all yeah. write back. Yeah, yeah. Unless you're Deontay and you just stand there. I that's mean, that's... fair. That's fair. Yeah. I'm going to have a bold prediction. It's going to be what? Is it week 17 now, right? Yes. Ravens? Yo, technically I'm going to say 18, we're not going to see yeah. Lamar. It's going to be think, I, Huntley. Huntley's going to be there. I don't doubt it. Honestly, he, he, hasn't, been, he hasn't been hurt yet to an extent. Um, He's still scrambling like he always does. He always dings up an ankle or a knee, and it's about this time yeah. of year. You know, down the stretch with like five games left, and – He's sitting on the sidelines. I'm telling you, Huntley's going to be under center once week 17 rolls around. It's possible. I I don't think that's a crazy out of the 
way prediction, honestly. If I was a betting no. man, I'd put money on it. Why are you shaking your head, Andrew? No, I'm saying that's not a crazy thought. He very well could be. Are you like trying to come at me now? Like, what's what's the issue here? No, I was like, are you shaking your head because you have him in a league or something? Or, um, we just made a trade actually in our one league. To talk about that. I mean, it's not the punishment league, so yeah, so it doesn't count. But yeah. I, I want to know these thoughts. Do you think this is a bad trade? I traded Etn and Cole Komet for Hawkinson and Ramondre Stevenson. Hawkinson I have just, a surplus of running backs. Hawkinson just had two touchdowns today. And my tight end sucks, a.k.a. Schultz and Komet. This is I'm, kind of like a scratcher back, I'll scratch your... Yeah, that's... I needed a running back, yeah, you know, I, I, Ferguson, who I'd rather, you know... Hey, that's honestly, good. like, pretty fair, honestly. Because you, you got Travis Etienne, right, Mots? And yeah. you got Hawkinson. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah, that's I think that's that's a pretty fair trade. So now I, my running backs would be Barkley, Jonathan Taylor, and Stevenson. It's still like not a bad trade off, I no. guess. No, it's not that's that's pretty solid. I, I I would give that like a Madden grade. I'd give that like a B plus. Maybe maybe yeah, a C I mean, minus. That was that's a pretty good worry, a minus. Said I was like worse now but no, i don't know how you can trust that. no i wouldn't i got a way better tight end than i had yeah. cole Komet stunk and schultz was okay but he literally had one reception for two yards today like you know i need something more reliable than well no, my sure. my other punishment league i got offered a trade and it's the cap league um i traded michael Pittman jr and damian pierce for Calvin Ridley and Bijan Robinson, I think. The oh, receiver God. equals out. My running backs were horrid. I needed Bijan, which the trade went through right before kickoff, so I didn't get Bijan in my lineup, which um, two touchdowns today, of course. Yeah. So that's just phenomenal. that's normally how it goes. Yeah, but let's you know we haven't t we haven't given an update on our own punishment league, the Youngsters one. Um, well, Dan, you're hard freezing hard. right now. Um, I Gary, was winning the last time I checked. I was I'm three and seven. I'm dog. Um, I'm up like sixteen points right now on whoever this is. Who's big dig swinging? Is that oh, weird? It's Gary, oh, Gary. Poor guy. Um, yeah. So you know, Kyron Williams is literally saving his life. Yes, with thirty nine points <laughs> right now. He's thirty nine today. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you have all you got to worry about after this is basically Cole Komet and Jordan Addison. Yeah. Which Cole Komet, I'll tell you, he's my other league. He is farts. Like, he is just stinky <laughs> butt fart. I also have and Gus then, Edwards to get tonight, too. So, yeah, you got Edwards. You got the rest of this uh, Buffalo game, which, yeah, Dick, you know, got Diggs a tutty. probably won't get much well, more. He got a tutty right before half. So, that's all I needed, you know. So. Yeah. And hey, you got Amari Cooper on Cleveland. They're gonna have to throw the ball here. So yeah, yeah. I mean, but he'll be good there. He only has three points. I just, I just wanna, I just wanna be in the middle of the pack. I don't want to be worst. I or last, and I don't want to be first. So middle of the pack's cool with me. I mean, I I got my playoff spot locked in, so I'm just cruising right now. Um, I mean, I. You hate to see someone go from first to worst, but Gary's, uh, you know, yeah, he's, he's flirting with it for he, sure. He was, he was so dominant last year too, just killing yeah. people. I mean, I killing honestly teams. think DJ's in big trouble. He refuses to acknowledge it too. Which One could only hope, right? That's that's what we yeah. hope, right? Like he has a ninety-nine one percent chance of winning right now in the standings. He is going to be five and seven most likely, which. <laughs> Is not good for the brand. <laughs> he has a thirty-seven percent chance of playoffs. That's not that's not too good for the brand. There is nothing Which more man, than I you, want. Man, if you went out, you could sneak in. I could, but I, it's not going to happen. Listen, there is nothing more that I want for a new father than to see him in the losers bracket right after Ohio State loses oh, to Michigan. Yeah. That, would be, that would be just a kiss right there. Yeah, 
Uh, heck of a game. That was a good game yesterday. Um, there are quite a few good games. The Iron Bowl was great. So let's talk a little college football. That was ending, great. Yeah. Um, not the ending I wanted. Um, was Washington, Washington State was great. Was that uh, the Big Apple Trophy or something like that? The Apple Trophy. Um, that was a great game. Not the ending I wanted there either. Um, what a balls ball. Yeah. A reverse at yeah. the end of the game. Yeah. Um, they, they just saw the look they wanted, you know, and it, it worked out for them. Uh, Florida State, Florida was a good game. Low scoring, 15 24. Florida State took them down. Um, yeah, it, you know, we're, we're getting into championship weekend coming up. You're going to have Georgia play Bama for the SEC championship. You're going to have Florida State play Louisville for the ACC. What's the Big Ten? Uh, Ohio, Iowa versus uh, Michigan. Yeah, Iowa. Iowa and Michigan. The Pac-12 is going to be Washington and Oregon. And then what's the Big yeah. 12? Is that going to be Oklahoma and somebody? I don't know. That's the only one I don't know. Um, but, yeah, we'll we'll see how this all shakes out because here's the thing, and I said it after Travis got hurt from Florida State. Florida State will went out and won't make it to the playoff. You'll end up getting, like, it'll be Michigan. Here's the other thing, though. Since Washington beat Oregon earlier in the year, if Oregon beats them in the Pac-12, what do you do? I'd say you take Oregon. Honestly, right? I'd this is the agree. rubber match. I'd what do you to... take? A win in the championship over a yeah. regular season win? Yeah, I'd have to agree. Because then you could also say that those two teams make it in, and then you have Georgia. Let's say Georgia beats Alabama. So then you'd have Michigan, Oregon, Washington, and Georgia. Did Oregon beat USC too? Or yeah. Washington beat USC? I don't know. If Oregon... Everybody beat USC this year. They suck. Yeah. Yeah. Same with Colorado. Everyone was proclaiming them the national champions after they beat a Matt TCU team. And was it four and eight they ended the season? Yes, four and eight. They no, should they no. should have lost to Colorado State second game of the year or third game of the yeah. year, whatever. Uh yeah. It, it good good year for college football. It it was. It was exciting. Watched a lot of college football this year. So yeah. what bowl do you think Penn State gets? Peach Bowl. Never been in the Peach Bowl. Makes sense for them to go to the peak. Well, they won't saying. send them to the Rose Bowl twice. No, I, Ohio, think, I don't Ohio think State Michigan and Ohio there. State will both make the playoffs. No, Ohio State will go to the Rose Bowl. Yeah. yeah. So, who, who's usually in the Peach Bowl? What's the other conference? Um, I think from what I saw the predictions, it's not. I don't. Th I don't know if the Peach Bowl is conference based, but I think they said. It might be Missouri and Penn State, which would be I an hope so because people are putting Missouri ahead of them. I really don't think so. I don't think Missouri's that great, right? I mean, the home of Chase Daniel, you never take lightly. I don't care. Yeah. What's the crap about a Midwestern state? Never have, never will. Seems unnecessary to take shots at the Midwest right now. I'm here it for is, it, I guess. Is, but, is it? What Fair have enough. they ever given us other than tornadoes? Corn? Yeah. C or a P? I didn't hear you. Corn. Corn. Nebraska. Corn. Nebraska. Okay. Band. You talking about the vegetable or the band? No. Vegetable. That'd be oh. with a K. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But Makes sense enough. Um, also, real quick, since we're talking sports and stuff, how about them pens, huh? Um, the power well, plays abysmal garbage. Yes, poopy, it, but yesterday better. Yeah, it's still shit. Against... The Leafs are good. The Leafs are good. They are. You know, I'll give it to them. Uh, how do you milk that one away against the Sabers the other night? Is that Friday Sorry. night? I don't yeah, know how. Yeah, that's a tough one. Is Michael Sullivan in the hot seat? Is who? Mike Sullivan in the hot seat? No, he, he won't be. He won't, won't be. be. Um, Just he like won 19 of his last 65 games. Todd Reardon's in the hot seat. That's who's in the hot seat, if anybody. Yeah. Mike Sullivan's, not gonna, Mike Sullivan's not going to be in the hot seat. Is that A&W? Yeah. You're not a mug guy? I'm a You're mug. You're not a mug a maniac? I'm mug, A&W, whatever it is. 
Barks? It's, yeah, Barks. Barks. If it's root What's beer, What's the I'll one drink that it. like people drink like it's too late at night and they don't want caffeine? Is that they all, Barks? They all have no caffeine. Really? Yeah, I thought all Mother free. Free. Did. A&W did. Nah. Nope, caffeine Barks free. Does. Is Barks the one that does maybe? That's maybe. just an old wives tale, right? Yeah. They're all caffeine free. Are you sure? Yeah. I, I, yeah, I trust you. Listen, I I trust Dan yeah. when it comes to root beer you're and good. Turner's tea. You're Andrew, you're good. Yeah, but they can't they can't see you. If you walk through the door and nobody can see you. Or a mug maniac like myself. Yeah, A and W it even says right here, no caffeine. A W. Come on. Oh, it. maybe that's like a new thing. No caffeine. I could have sworn. That's why I, I prefer to drink like the root beers and cream sodas because they're caffeine free. I don't yeah. care for caffeine. Cream soda. You know who drank cream soda? Who? Did you ever play like Club Penguin? Do you remember Rock Hopper? I can't he was, say like, that red, I remember. The red pirate penguin had always rolled into town with barrels of cream soda. <laughs> I can't, can't say that I remember. Yeah. I, I think I played Club, yeah. Club Penguin one time and it was my mission to get banned and I did. And I never played it again. Yeah. So this guy would the always look roll I into just town got from Amanda, she's appalled. It always roll into town and it'd have barrels of cream soda on his pirate ship. That's fair. That was Rock Hopper. I mean, that, I mean that's just Rock Hopper for you. Yeah. Like in a nutshell. I like it. It always bring the party. He brought the. He was like a big energy guy. He he wasn't really like a horse, but you know, like he he got the job done. He brought the barrels of cream soda, but he just, he wasn't like, at the end of the day, like a workhorse. Okay. Yeah. If, if a you horse, can't really call him a horse. If a horse were to play an instrument, what would it be? What instrument would it be? Um, I don't know. Like a flute, maybe? Covered in, like, skin? I don't know. Oh, Jesus! Oh. Oh, come on, man. Throw up. I don't know. What? Why? That's why I, I like Dr. Pepper cream soda. It's pretty good, but there's caffeine in it. I thought you said it didn't. The Dr. Pepper cream soda has caffeine. Uh, doctor's orders or what? What? Not is it like caffeine? doctor's orders? Like putting the caffeine in there? Uh, I'm, I'm sure it is. You know. Well, oh, listen, we got we got one thing to straighten out. We got club finals right now in Shell mm -hmm. and the Honey Badgers online. Do we strike while the iron's hot? Yes. Yeah, folks. Yep. Uh, I mean, sounds good. We're about an hour in almost, right? Uh, 45 minutes. That's fine. You know, short and sweet. We don't need to, like, drag things out. After. Yeah. But, you know, we're back. we're back. Um, I like his format. Mm -hmm. We could always do it a different way if we want, but, you know. No, that's right. fine. We good? Yep. Uh, Dan, let her rip. You got um, a tater chip. Google Rock Hopper on Google. If you want. He has barrels of creams that are waiting for you. Uh, I bought